Hey, Inspired Moneymaker. In this episode, the host of Catfish, the TV show, talks all about digital scams so you don't get ripped off. Episode 216 features Neve Shulman, the Catfish Guy, TV host and producer. And that's why the show continues to exist um, and why people continue to fall victim to deception, uh, whether it be romance or financial. As much as I hope that this Zelle campaign prevents people from, from getting taken advantage of, I know it won't stop it. It's not going to end. There's a, there, there will forever be uh, scams and um, fraud and people looking to take advantage of other people. You know, you do what you can and you hope that you make a difference and that you, you if you just help one person, you know, that, that's a win. I'm Andy Wong, host of the Inspired Money podcast and financial advisor at Runnymede Capital Management. Our guest today is Neve Shulman. He's a family guy who runs marathons. He's also subject of the critically acclaimed 2010 documentary film Catfish and host of Catfish the TV show. Catfish is such a cultural phenomenon that Neve was parodied by Adam Levine on Saturday Night Live. He's a social media influencer with over 8 million combined followers across social media accounts. And you may have seen Neve and dancing partner Jenna Johnson play second in season 29 of Dancing with the Stars. In this episode, you'll learn what it means to be catfished, scams to look out for, and how to protect yourself. And tune in until the end for a tip from Neve about growing your career and achievements. Now let's get inspired with Neve Shulman. Neve, welcome to Inspired Money. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Hey, Andy. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Let's jump right in. What's your earliest childhood memory of money? Huh. Well, I think... As a uh, Jewish New Yorker, um, obviously my bar mitzvah is probably the first time that I ever really remember um, having my own money, right? Because you get all these gifts and you, know, you put it into your sort of first bank account. Um, unfortunately for me, that memory is also tied to my earliest memory of actually getting scammed, believe it or not. I was walking home from school shortly after my bar mitzvah. And this was, you know, 1997, which if you remember, was right around the time that Apple started making their laptops. They were like very, very first early uh, MacBooks. And I really wanted one. Um, but they were very expensive and, you know, out of reach for me. So just so happened I was walking home from school, two guys uh, standing on the street um, had a beautifully saran wrapped, you know, a shrink wrapped MacBook. And as I walked by, they said, Hey, uh, you want to buy a, com a computer? And I thought, Oh my God, this is crazy. I've wanted one of those. So I inquired and they said, yeah, you know, we got this new computer. Don't ask questions, but we'll give it to you for, for 500 bucks. Um, which was obviously way less than they were selling for. And so I foolishly, I uh, went to the ATM and took $500 out of my you know, newly created bank account, asked if I could open it before I paid, but they were, you know, very, they were suspicious about, well, they think maybe someone's following them or oh, come with us and, oh, hey, actually no. And they kept sort of stalling and, and then saying, look, if you don't want to make the deal, never mind, we'll, we'll, we'll sell it to someone else. So finally I said, okay, fine, fine. I gave them the money, took the box, I, I ran home, opened it, and obviously did not find a computer inside, just some some sort of rocks and, and other assorted items to emulate the weight and feel of a computer. And that stuck with me for my whole life, that, that experience uh, and the ability and how, how easily I was sort of taken um, and manipulated. So that's, that's uh, <laughs> there it is. That's a big lesson for a 13 year old. What was your family's reaction? Did that help form a little bit of how you could kind of recover and deal with it? I, now that you mentioned, I'm not sure I ever told my family. I know my brother knows, um, but I'm not, I, I think I was so humiliated and, and embarrassed um, that I don't remember if I told anyone or not. Um, 
and this this is sort of the first time I've ever really publicly talked about it. Uh, but it definitely, you know, I, I I look back at it as an important lesson. Um, and and in terms of the cost of sort of getting that lesson and and earning a little bit of street smarts, I consider it a very inexpensive one um, because it, it definitely, in some ways, prepared me for for life. Although I did obviously years later end up kind of getting duped online and in a very different way, but at least they didn't get any money from me. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have this common thread, I think, of getting scammed. Let's start there because you and your brother, Rel, you guys are at the center of this cultural phenomenon that started with your 2010 documentary, Catfish. You were patient zero who got catfished first for anyone listening who hasn't heard the term catfish, can you explain what does it mean if somebody is catfishing you? Yes. So in, in very basic terms, a catfish is someone who creates a fake or, or somewhat false uh, profile on the Internet, um, generally with the intent to engage in a romantic relationship. Uh, or at least that's sort of how, how it was defined as a result of the documentary about me. Um, over the course of nine months where I had interaction with uh, a number of people online, one of whom I developed a romantic or romance with. Um, they were a family that lived in Michigan. We went up there to meet them and discovered that much of what they had told me was not true. And the documentary was called Catfish. And, and as a result, has now created a, a TV show and, and definition in the dictionary as such. Um, so, so that's how I ended up here uh, doing this, and, that, and then that's how strangely getting, you know, catfish online turned out to, in, in a weird way, and be the best thing that ever happened to me. For this kid who got scammed with the Apple product, and then you kept it quiet, maybe you didn't tell your parents because of the shame. You got catfished in this relationship, but your brother made a documentary. It was like the opposite. You broadcast right, yeah. it and shared it with the world. How did that whole thing feel? Well, you know, it's interesting. I I never really knew, I certainly didn't know going into being filmed that it was going to end up resulting in, in a bigger story, right? I mean, at the time, I just thought I had a friend in Michigan and that maybe one day I would meet her and we'd, we'd you know, date for a minute. Or I didn't think there was much of a of a potential there. Of course, the story evolved, the film then followed, uh, and I never knew that it was going to achieve any success, go to a festival, end up coming out in theaters, and sort of touching on a nerve for a phenomenon that was taking place. And so even though you call me patient zero, uh, because in a way I was sort of the first large-scale public victim of this, it turns out it had been happening a lot. Um, before me and during and and still after, I was just the first person to really start the conversation. Uh, and then very shortly after that, and the TV show, it, it got sort of seen again on a large public scale with the football player from Notre Dame, Manti Teo. So like the conversation needed somewhere, somewhere to start. And, you know, for better or worse, we, we were able to do that. Uh, and similarly, since then, and obviously more and more, there's a, a lot of people who are victims of financial scams and like myself might be too ashamed to, to want to talk about it. Um, and so when Zell approached me with the opportunity to create a campaign to help start that conversation and give people tips, uh, it, it, it felt like a very similar and very necessary uh, conversation to be at the center of and to help start. It's really cool that you can partner with Zell to create this campaign that I think will just continue the conversation and help people because I don't know, when I think about cybersecurity and scams, like first I think about the stock image of the guy wearing the hoodie and, and wearing this mask. And then I think about this highly organized like group of criminals in far yeah. off places that are just preying on us to catch us in our weak moments. Like what, what chance do we, like what chance do we have? against all of this well yes i think there is a very um 
dark place you can go when you think about all the potential evil that exists in the world and, and the people and organizations that are constantly you know, chipping away at our security and, and looking to take advantage of us. The good news is you can protect yourself. And, and in this case, I think more so than people even realize, there are very simple things that, that if you're, or simple tools that once you're empowered with, um, can really help protect you, you from, from being taken advantage of. Um, and, and similarly, you know, the, much like in the wild, these scammers tend to really just prey on the, the, the weak. So if, if they detect that you even have the slightest um, sense of, of what to look out for or hesitation, they'll just move on. You know, like they, they're not really interested in, in um, doing the extra work if they can find an easier victim. So I think if we can get everyone uh, aware of and, and armed with these tools on how to protect themselves, it will make a major difference um, and, and, and help prevent a lot of people from, from experiencing the unfortunate uh, shame and, and misfortune of being taken advantage of. I think the scary thing is that being a potential victim, it's not about being intelligent or not intelligent. It's not about being tech savvy or not. I think like we're all vulnerable and we all have moments of weakness where we get busy and you let your guard down for just a second. If they hit you at the right time, they're going to get you. How do you define, is there a difference between fraud and a scam? Yeah. Uh, it's tough. I mean, it, again, and, and you sort of bring up a really important point, which is that sometimes getting, a, yes, I would say fraud and scams are different, although I'm not necessarily the one to give you the exact definition and difference, but, but a good example of that is you can, you can get scams. Um, sorry, a fraud can exist uh, sort of where you least expect it, right? So you, you might be interacting with um, someone uh, buying something from someone that you know, uh, whether it's a store or an art gallery uh, or even a service that that you often engage with, could could, could be anything. It could be something as simple as your babysitter, um, and their email could get hacked, and you could get an email from that person that you know that says, "Hey, you never paid me for this thing, or or you still owe me money for that, you know that." that dinner that we, whatever, it could, 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 it could be anything. And so they'll say, Hey, send me the money here, or here's my, you know, my, my, uh, my info or my bank account. And, and so you'll say, Oh, sure. And that person's email got hacked. Someone then sent you a request for money and you paid it because you didn't think anything of it. So it, it's that, that would, I, that I would say, I would, you know, put that more in the fraud category, whereas scams tend, tend to be a little bit less, you know, um, personal, right? It's, it's, it's usually from your bank, someone pretending to call from your bank and say, Hey, we've noticed some suspicious activity. We just need you to confirm your info. And, or in some cases they'll, they'll call and say, Hey, we want to move your money to another account because this account's been compromised. So we need you to send your money to this new account. And you know, that, that sort of thing is happening a lot too. So there's just, a, you, you kind of have to really be on the lookout. Yeah, as a financial advisor, I see it almost on a daily basis. And I see the the importance of protecting your email password and trying to use like two-factor authentication and whatever things you can do uh, to make sure that people who shouldn't be in your in inbox aren't there because these are just getting more sophisticated. Like I, I hear of situations where somebody's email gets compromised. The fraudster is patient. They'll wait for that person to actually go on vacation. And meanwhile, they've searched their sent folder to find who's their financial advisor, who's their accountant, who's their bank. And as soon as the person goes on vacation, that's when they start sending messages like, I'm traveling, I need uh. money transferred, and crazy things happen. In your research, what kind of scams are you seeing trending right now? Like, what are, what are things that we need to be aware of so that we can protect against them. For sure. Um, well, so I think two things are, are coming up right now. Um, as we go into the holiday season, 
obviously a lot of us haven't really been traveling uh, for the past year and a half and are just now finally saying, okay, you know what, these, this winter, or these holidays, I'm going to go, I'm going to either visit my family or I'm going to take a, a much needed vacation. Um, and so a lot of people are looking to rent uh, vacation homes uh, on any of the platforms, Airbnb, VRBO. And what we're, one of the things that we're seeing a lot of is just fake rental properties. People are, are creating a listing for a, a home that you can rent on the beach or on the lake, wherever. Uh, they have the pictures, they have the address, um, all of which they've taken from a, an old real estate listing uh, when the house was sold 10 years ago. You find the listing, you message them, and then they say, oh, great. Look, I can save you some money if you want to pay me off of the platform. We can avoid the fees. Here's my info. Just send me the deposit or, or pay in full and you'll be all set. I'll take it. I'll take, I'll reserve the time and I'll, you know, take it, take the listing down. And then people are showing up at these homes for the week with their suitcase and the people who live there are, there, are home. And they've obviously no idea why these strange people have showed up at their house. So that's something we got to look out for. Another thing is obviously gifts. We're going to, you know, if you're looking to buy gifts this, this holiday season for your friends and family, you're looking for a deal. And in a very similar way, you find something online, seems great. Maybe you can get a discount. Maybe you can you can get a deal, whether it's Craigslist or any of the other sort of uh, marketplace apps. And unfortunately, lots of people are making fake listings, and they're they're going to rush you into paying so that someone else doesn't get it before you do. And whether you get something or not, it's it's often you know. <laughs> not going to be the thing you wanted or it won't be anything at all and you'll just be out of the cash in hosting the catfish tv show for nearly 10 years like one it's impressive that it has this longevity and you never run out of material <laughs> there are there are more and yeah. more people who, who are reaching out to you to be on the show at like does that make you become distrustful of people? Well, I think obviously having been taken advantage of before, both financially and emotionally, uh, I think like most people, I tend to default to trust. Um, if someone appears to want to help me or, or, or provide me with some sort of beneficial service, my instinct is always, oh yeah, great. This is a nice person and I should trust them. Obviously, I've incorporated some fact checking and research now into my day-to-day uh, -day life, but I, I still tend to think that most of us don't assume the worst of people. And, uh, and that's, a beautiful thing, but it's also a very dangerous thing. And I think we all now we're entering a time and an age of, of society where it's, it's our responsibility to protect ourselves and, and to have that suspicion, um, not necessarily specifically for the person, but just for the environment, just to know that, Hey, this person might be great, but even if they are great and I do want to buy something from them, maybe their email got hacked. And I need to double check with them that this bank account information where I'm supposed to send them money is theirs. Um, because there are, there are uh, agents of um, mischief or, or, or you know, dark agents in the world that are always going to look for vulnerabilities. So I think that starting the conversation, raising some awareness and encouraging people to talk about these things, much like I did with Catfish in terms of, of fake rom romance, People now need to be talking about uh, financial scams, uh, especially digital ones, and, and know the information uh, and how to kind of take the steps to ensure that they're not getting taken advantage of. In my experience, one of the critical factors that scammers try to take advantage of is that uh, issue of time, right? They're, they create this urgency. Like you need to act yeah, now. Exactly. So I think one of the important thing one of the important things is to slow down. You have a lot of experience in 
using the internet to do your research and to uncover like inconsistencies what tips or tactics do you have for people you know take a minute to stop but then what yeah well so great 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 example um if there seems to be an urgency to the issue even though it will inspire you to say yes i want to act i need to i want to protect myself or i want to help my friend like it's always good to take a step back uh, and and then give yourself the time to confirm uh, and and double check whatever it is that you you know you're doing. Um, I think what another thing that happens a lot is people will get calls and the caller ID will say the name of their bank, um, which to them indicates oh this is my bank calling. That's something that can be unfortunately easily faked. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's your bank. If your bank calls you and asks you to confirm any information, um, that doesn't happen. Banks won't call you and ask you to give them your information. They have your information, they don't need it. If that happens, hang up and just call your bank and, and just say, hey, I just wanted to let you know that I just got a call. Was that you? And if it, well, obviously it won't have been them, but it's always better to call your bank rather than have your bank call you. Um, and obviously, you know, when, when and ever possible, stick to sending money to people that you know uh, and trust. Um, and uh, just always be on the lookout. I mean, uh, it's unfortunate, but it can come from any direction at any time. And if it feels even the slightest bit strange or unusual, trust your gut. Uh, I think a lot of people, like you said, get rushed into things because, you know, they're not sure and they don't want to make the mistake of not doing, doing what they've been told. Um, so if it feels a little off, uh, you can always reset, call your bank, call your credit card, call your friend and just say, Hey, was this you or is this right? I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's like exactly what you said. Never feel pressure, uh, to, 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 have, to make any kind of financial, um, exchange. I do get paranoid about if when I'm sending somebody a Venmo, it's like, am I sure this is the right person? Am I sure this is the right, right. account? And I'm, I press send with like, I'm 99% sure. That's true. Are there scams? Like, are there digital payment scams that you've been following? Well, I mean, I, I, you mean like specifically through? Yeah. Related to, because I think it's more and more common that, we're using apps to send payment, or is it more about a larger fraud and it just happens that the method of payment is digital? Yeah, I mean, I think that in general, you know, fraud exists and now we're seeing it really permeate into the sort of peer-to-peer -peer payment platforms um, and, and obviously di digital banking world. Um, I, I think that, uh, you, you, I was just trying to respond. Um, I had an idea or a response, but that scans in digital. Yes. Payment. Yes. But now I don't remember. So I guess I'll have to, if it comes to me, I'll, I'll get back to it. Okay. Do you have resources that you can share? Like, are there websites that people should go to regularly to help us just stay informed? Yeah. Well, so one of the things that Dell's doing is providing, um, uh, so the sort of information that, that they have on good ways to avoid scams uh, through the Zelle website. Uh, and also obviously the PSA is that we're creating um, this series on kind of things to look out for. Uh, but I, I do think that often the best resource is, you know, y your bank uh, or whatever platform you're on. If there's anything happening or if you're in, in, in a negotiation or a situation where something feels a little off, always best to kind of go straight to the, the source, whether it's the platform or the bank and just confirm for yourself, whatever details or information that you need. Um, but it's tough because, and this is what I was going to say, since I posted my first video uh, just last week, I've had a ton of people, people I know, uh, specifically who, who saw the video on my Instagram, who then sent me messages and say, Oh my God, 
I got scammed or, oh, my, my mom just dealt with something like this. And I hadn't heard from those people before. Um, and I don't know how much they had or hadn't talked about it before either. And so I think the success of this campaign is, is as much about giving people actual uh, sort of tools uh, and, and, uh, and raising awareness about the types of scams as it is just giving people permission to start talking about it. Um, because I really do think there is a tremendous amount of, of shame associated with uh, people who get taken advantage of and, and scammed. Um, and if we were all more comfortable talking about it, it, it would raise awareness and concern and hopefully prevent a lot of people getting taken advantage of moving forward. Yeah, I fear that it's, it's um, there are so many people that have gotten scammed and haven't shared it. Yeah, so. and in fact, in a, in a, in a survey that uh, Zell did, they found that 25% of people who, who responded to the question of, you know, have you been the victim of a financial scam said yes, and 50% said that they knew someone who had been. So, I mean, that's crazy to think that at least half of us have either known or been the victim of a financial scam, which is wild, but it's, it's a real problem. It is crazy. And when I told my wife that I was going to be talking to you today, her reaction was, Oh, so-and-so that, that we just saw at a soccer game oh, last yeah. weekend. She's like, she got scammed for a utility, you know, utility right. scam. I'm like, Oh my god. I know. Gosh. Yeah. Everyone, everyone, everyone knows someone now. So the more we talk about it, obviously, you know, there's, there's, there's the security side of things and hopefully platforms and, and websites will, will continue to improve, but it, it always sort of unfortunately ends up falling on the user and we just have to be diligent, uh, with, with our own time and money. So is your mustache related <laughs> to this campaign for Instagram and TikTok? Uh, it's not, I would say if anything, it's, it's more connected to the, uh, Movember, um, organization, which is, I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it's yeah. A good cause. yeah. So I, I, I'm going to post something uh, about Movember today, um, just to help raise awareness about men's, uh, health. But, um, it does, I do like that. It gives me a little bit of that sort of private detective vibe. So maybe, it, maybe it works for the Zell campaign too. I need you the hat now. You know what? Let me get a video. fedora. I think I have one over here. <laughs> Let's see. It's worth it. It's worth it. Even though this is just a podcast. I've got a few options. Oh, we'll ha we'll share the video. Yeah, let's see. I mean, these are, this is a little bit more of a sun hat, but I think it could kind of work. Does this kind of work? No, that's too small. What about this? Is that, is that giving me? Nice. A little bit more like. You're incognito. No one will know who is on this episode. <laughs> so anyway. So you're making pretty short form content for this campaign. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying our best to create content that will be easily seen uh, and ingested and, and shareable. Um, that's why we're, we're sort of breaking things down um, into smaller videos, doing a few of them so that each one kind of touches on a different specific area uh, and, and information. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously there are longer form uh, videos we could make and, and maybe we will. Uh, but right now we're just trying to get out these small sort of tips and tricks uh, to people going into the holidays that they can use immediately to sort of arm themselves. Are those both Neve Shulman accounts on Instagram and TikTok? E you mean, are they my, my accounts? Yeah. Oh, where do yeah, people so, go so, since we're talking yeah, about so it, it? If you're looking to uh, find out a little bit more, you can find me on TikTok or Instagram, Neve Shulman, uh, or again, you can go to the Zell um, website. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of resources there as well. Got it. Yeah. It wasn't a trick oh, question. Well, I thought, See, no, I thought you were joking. Like, are those actually my account? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah, trying exactly. to fish you right now. Can you just confirm your, <laughs> I'm gonna take uh, login over your account. And password for me? <laughs> exactly. I'm going to send you a code right now. You just have to confirm. 
I want to talk a little bit about your career and your inspired money story, because you said that creating this documentary was one of the best things that happened to you. I think to contrast with this campaign that you're doing, short form, people have a short attention span, but Catfish turned from documentary to TV show to podcast. How do you create this longevity? Uh, interesting. You can walk through as a podcast. No, just... uh, okay. Sorry. My brother is just saying hello. Um, no, he sees it. He sees it. He sees okay, it. Um, so in terms of longevity, look, I never expected that 10 years later, I'd still be doing catfish as my main, uh, career. Um, it's, it's been surprising to me and continues to, to surprise me because baked into the sort of essence of, of making the show is essentially the idea that people will watch it, they'll learn, they'll discuss and avoid getting catfished themselves. So you'd think that after a certain amount of time, you wouldn't need the show anymore because people would, would be aware of it and, and successful at avoiding it. But unfortunately, uh, for any number of reasons, be it age and sort of new young people growing up and getting online for the first time. And in general, I think just the condition of the human heart, uh, there is always going to be a vulnerability. There's always going to be a desire to connect and, and um, feel seen and heard and loved. And, and, and when you get, or when you think you're getting something that you want, whether it's attention and affection or flirtation or, you know, product or service, uh, it's very hard to resist. And, and that's why the show continues to exist um, and why people continue to fall victim to uh, deception, uh, whether it be romance or, or, or financial. And, and why, as much as I hope that this Zelle campaign prevents uh, people from, from getting taken advantage of, I know it won't stop it. It's not going to end. There's a, there, there will forever be uh, scams and, um, fraud and people looking to take advantage of other people. So, you know, you do what you can, um, and you hope that you make a difference and that you, you, if you just help one person, you know, that that's a win, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you know, there's, there's a lot of dark, uh, scary, not great people in the world. And, you got to learn how to look out for them. And there are great stories in there that you yeah. uncover because everybody has their own story. Exactly. Going from like catfish victim in the documentary to host of the TV show to executive producer of the TV show, like what does that progression look like? Well, this was, you know, this, this the show for me was, a new thing, you know, I'd never um, been a part of a television show before. Uh, coming out of the documentary, I'd never been a part of a documentary before. And so it was all very new, it happened all very fast. And, you know, there were definitely some some growing pains for me. I, I, I had been sort of running my own um, very small production company in New York, making wedding videos and bar mitzvah montages. And I was sort of used to being the boss um, and having kind of the, the final say in how the edit would look or how that shot should be filmed or whatever it might be. So being kind of, rel not relegated in a bad way, but all of a sudden designated as the host uh, and with a, with a another director and a whole editing department and producers of MTV and not necessarily being, you know, in charge was difficult for me at first uh, because it, it felt so personal and I was really felt very vulnerable that like, okay, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm the face of this show now. I need to make sure it feels exactly the way it should for me. Um, so it, it took a little while for me to both get comfortable with the team and also comfortable with having a team. Um, but once we all kind of started to mesh and, make the show what it is, it, it was fantastic. And, and I really have learned a tremendous amount um, about the process of making a TV show, about uh, how to best 
work with others, which was something I hadn't really done going into the show. Um, but the, but I think for me, the best lesson um, from from the last you know ten years of, of traveling and meeting people and going to their homes and and working to earn their trust uh, in a very short period of time to to make them comfortable with me and then comfortable putting themselves on camera and sharing their story uh, with, you know, uh, such a broad audience is just the power of, uh, of listening. I think it seems simple and, and many of us are, are lucky that we have people who listen to us in our lives, but many people don't. And when you, when you take time to ask someone a question and, and wait for their response um, without an agenda or without setting yourself up to say the thing or tell the story you want to tell, but you really are just there to listen to them. It is amazing how, how much people will open up and how appreciative they'll be of that. So, so that's been a big thing. And that, and that, and again, that's, that's what I've found even just since we first posted the first video uh, for, for this, you know, security campaign is like, Oh, people want to tell their stories. Um, and, and if you give them the platform, if you give them permission to do it, uh, and, you, and you're there to listen, they'll, they'll tell you. So um, that's a sort of just powerful tool and, and lesson that I've learned make, making the show. And then it's cool with the social media campaign, since people can comment, you'll get engagement. You can really see, you get that real-time right. feedback, yeah. which is really nice. At this stage in your career, how do you evaluate opportunities like how do you follow up being on dancing <laughs> with the stars i think I, i've I, i'm coming to a point in my in my career um and i don't it's it, it's tricky because i think about it a lot right I, I i want more opportunities i want to be working more i want to be involved with with more things um but you also begin to understand kind of what makes sense for you uh, and, and w where your path is going to take you, even, even if it isn't necessarily where you'd like it to go. So even though I have a vision for a career of mine uh, that might be inspired by other people who are doing bigger other things, that's not my path. Uh, and so kind of accepting, okay, this is, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm going. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have a, a, a perfectly clear picture of what the future will hold for me, but beginning to trust that things kind of emerge, uh, opportunities present themselves, and just being ready to take advantage of them uh, and not rushing. I think that's, you know, as, as a younger person, I was, I was always frustrated that things weren't happening quickly enough or uh, didn't seem like they were going to succeed in the way that I'd imagined they would. Um, and so just taking, taking time, giving yourself time and not feeling pressure, at least from yourself to have to be maximizing your, uh, potential every day. Um, and just being happy with what you have is, is something that I'm starting to, you know, get a little bit more comfortable with. No, that's really valuable. You can't force a tree to grow right, faster. But it's growing. But sometimes, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't may not be growing as quickly as you'd like, but it's it's still growing. So what's in, what's next in your vision? I hear rumblings of a catfish musical. You know, yeah, I, I uh, I've always loved musicals and and theater, um, and my brother and, and our friend Henry uh, and our producers on Catfish, we've all kind of mused and and thought over the years that the story and the subject matter would lend itself really well to the stage. So that's something we've been developing. And, and again, as much as I'd like it to happen faster, there's a process and it's slow, but at least it's, it's in the works. Um, so we'll see, fingers crossed, you know, there's a, a million things have to happen exactly right for that to work out, but maybe it will. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, so happy making catfish still and, and think there's still a lot of stories to tell uh, and new ones that will continue to, to always present themselves. So for me right now, I'm focused on that. Um, thinking about, uh, not thinking about, developing uh, actually a, a, a show 
a, a, my own kind of cat live show um, that would be, you know, an in-person experience to further discuss uh, the phenomenon of catfish, but to also potentially kind of create a, a safe space for people to meet in person um, and uh, sort of engage with their community around the conversation uh, about catfish. Um, so, so hopefully sometime next year, um, I'll announce some, I guess, tour dates, <laughs> uh, which will be really fun. Cool. Um, figuring it out, but excited about that. And I, you know, I've also got three kids now, so I've got to, got to spend time with them, uh, which is, which is starting to also be super fun because my daughter's five now and she's got like a whole personality and imagination and sense of self that's exciting to be around and uh and joke with and my son and, and, well, yeah so so i've got my hands full plenty plenty going on just trying to enjoy it and um not not worry and stress too much about the future which i think a lot of us um agree is a scary prospect Well, congrats on your expanding family and the continued success professionally. Can you tell the Inspired Money listeners and viewers where to follow you? Yeah, sure. I, I, uh, I'm on pretty much all the major platforms in terms of uh, social media. So you can find me just Neve Shulman. Um, there's also a website if you want a little bit more information or sign up for my newsletter, uh, which, which will inform you about any upcoming shows or you know, breaking news. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Catfish also has a podcast our, ourselves. There's a Catfish podcast on Wondery. So if you're into podcasts, which you probably are if you're listening to this, uh, and you want to check out the show but don't have time to sit and watch an episode uh, on television, you can you can listen to one. Uh, it's, a pre it's pretty great. Um, so th so those are the, the places you can find me at the moment, uh, or just walking the streets of Williamsburg, Brooklyn, picking up garbage as I often do. Um, so there you go. <laughs> I will put that all in the show notes. People will have to go find you in Williamsburg about There's the garbage. There's trash can't everywhere. Do anything yeah. about that. But you're multimedia. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you, much, Nick. Andy. So, what was your favorite inspired money moment? When it comes to scams, Neve says to trust your gut. If something doesn't feel right, slow down and check things out. I also loved what he said give yourself time. Be happy with what you have. Do you ever feel like things aren't happening quickly enough? Whether it's your investment portfolio or your career, growth takes patience. If you had a different favorite Inspired Money moment, let me know by posting a comment below. For watching to the end, I want to send you this Inspired Money sticker. Go to inspiredmoney.fm slash Andy, send me your name and address, and I'll put this in the mail for you. Thank you so much for joining me on this mission. Have an inspired week and do something that scares you because that's where the magic happens.